Hey guys, hello everyone and welcome to yet another video of TIFR PYQ series and today we are going to take questions from molecular spectroscopy. Now molecular spectroscopy is one of the most important topic if you are preparing for TIFR exam and this is one of the topic which has very high weightage. You can easily get around 3 to 4 questions every year in your TIFR exam from molecular spectroscopy and the question includes basic formula questions and also some of them which involve a little bit of logical understanding of the question. So in this video, I'm going to take some questions from 2021, 2020 and some subsequent years of TIFR exam. And we are going to see that how to solve them, how to approach these types of questions. Now, without wasting any time, let's continue with our video. All right, the first question which I'm going to take here is from TFR 2020 exam. And the question says that among the following, which molecule will have a smallest spacing between the vibrational levels? Now, spacing between the vibrational levels, uh, if you know the vibrational levels, let's say, if these are two vibrational levels, they correspond to a certain energy level like EV and EV plus one, where V is the vibrational state. The energy between them is basically delta E and, and the energy of a particular vibrational state uh, correspond to like energy depends upon frequency of vibration because you know E is equals to H nu and frequency is proportional to under root K upon mu where mu is your reduced mass. This is reduced mass and this is force constant. Now since in the question they have given you hydrogen and chlorine. So the force constant will be approximately same. The only difference is going to be on the basis of the isotope. So heavier the isotope, more is going to be your reduced mass and more the reduced mass, smaller will be your frequency and a smaller frequency will give you smaller energy values and smaller energy values will give you smaller energy differences. So this is the relationship which we can build up. So simply we can say that this delta E that is energy differences is proportional to your frequency and frequency is inversely proportional to your reduced mass. So higher the mass, smaller is the spacing between the two energy levels. So here if you see the options, in for option 1 you have mass 1 and 35, here you have 1 and 37, then you have 2 and 37 and here you have 2 and 35. The heaviest mass is in option number C or you can say the heavy, heaviest isotope is in option number C and that's why it will have uh, the lowest like new for this will be lowest and if your new is lowest so energy difference is also going to be smallest in this case. Similarly if the question would have been asked that which of the options is going to have uh, like largest spacing between the vibrational level I just want to know your answers. So you can just answer down in the comment sections below I would like to know that what you guys think which is going to be the correct option among them which will have largest spacing between the vibrational levels. All right, let's take the next question then. Okay, so this question is again from 2020 TIFR exam and it says ki the rotational energy of a diatomic molecule is given by E rotational is equals to JJ plus 1 HBE where E rotational is in joules if the rotational constant of hydrogen molecule is given by 1.8324 e to the power 12. This is nothing but 1.8324 into 10 to the power 12. Okay, that's how it is written in the scientific notation and that much hurts. The rotational period of the hydrogen molecule in J is equals to 10 level will be. Now, this question was very simple and very straightforward. You just need to find out the rotational time period and you need to know the relationship between time period and frequency and all those things you have to do. So how to approach this question we know that E is equals to H nu where nu is your frequency of rotation and this should be in hertz. So let's put all these things. So this is equals to J, J plus 1, then H, B, E. I have just substituted the values from the given question. Now you can simply cancel out this H and this H. Now you have nu which is frequency is equals to J, J plus 1 and B, E. Now you all know that J does not have any unit of its own, right? 
so j is a number it's a rotational state so that will just have a number b e will have a certain unit and that unit will correspond like that unit should be equal to the frequency and that's what it is b e has a hertz unit and that will give you the unit of frequency what you have to do is you have to substitute the value so j is given to you as 10 you have to substitute 10 and then you have 10 plus 1 and then b e is like uh, 1.8324 into 10 to the power 12 so now you just have to solve this use your calculator to do this and this is going to give you uh, your frequency in terms of hertz now once you get this frequency in the terms of hertz you need to find out the time period and frequency and time period are inversely proportional to each other okay so how to find out the time period the time period is going to be like 1 upon frequency that's what it will be because you know if you take hertz like 1 upon second is basically hertz right so this will be like 1 upon uh, frequency and when you do that it is like 1 upon if you multiply this this will be 110 multiplied by 1.8324 into 10 to the power 12 and you just have to use your calculator to solve it further and on solving and on, on calculating this you will get option number b as your correct option and that's how this question has to be done so i'm not calculating it i have just given you the values you can use your calculator to solve it further rough value like roughly you will get this much as the answer all right so this is how this question has to be done in your exam all right so that was a quite good one let's take the next question then okay now this question requires a little bit of fundamental understanding of oscillators this was again asked in tifr 2020 exam it says that for a harmonic oscillator in its ground state where v is equals to zero the energy is given by e is equals to half h nu yes that we all know then where v is the vibrational frequency sorry it's nu not v so yeah nu is vibrational frequency this is due to its so what does it has okay now this question uh, is having a little bit of background we know that energy ground state energy for rotational spectroscopy is zero we know that but ground state energy for vibrational spectroscopy or for vibrational states is non-zero it's actually equal to half h nu or half h omega e so that's how we write it down so why is it so what part of this energy comes into play so whenever something is oscillating okay whenever something is oscillating let's say if you have uh, let's say this is a fixed place and you have a pendulum attached to this and if this pendulum is doing to and fro motion that's called oscillation right so when this pendulum will be at its mean positions means when it will be at these positions at the ends over here it will have maximum of potential energy okay so potential energy will be max at this place and here kinetic energy of this will be zero because you know when the pendulum oscillates it becomes it, it literally stops here for very small time and then again goes back over here at the center it will have potential energy of zero because here it won't be having any ability to stop it will be in a very fast motion to move over here whereas the kinetic energy over here will be like maximum okay so that will be maximum and same goes over here potential energy maximum kinetic energy zero so the energy of this harmonic oscillator is actually the sum of both kinetic energy and potential energy it's it's because of the both energy contribution and that is going to be the answer for this also even in the ground state if anything is uh, oscillating or if anything is vibrating that will have both the types of energies kinetic energy also and potential energies also so that will be the answer whereas whereas in the case of rotation that is not true if something is rotating let's say if this is a top which is rotating around this axis so in the ground state when it is not moving when it is stationary or when it is not moving so the rotational motion is zero so the energy which comes from the rotational is only from its kinetic energy so in the rotational spectroscopy or in the rotational levels the energy are corresponded by the motion of the particle and since in the ground state the particle does not move that's why the overall energy is corresponding to the kinetic energy over there okay so if the question would have been asked about uh, about the rotational motion then the answer would have been kinetic energy and in that case your ground state energy is zero okay 
that's because the particle does not move in the ground state whereas if it is asked about harmonic oscillator or anything which is vibrating or doing a to and fro motion in the ground state it will have certain energy and that energy is because of its kinetic energy as well as potential energy both answer will be option number c all right let's take the next question now okay the question over here says the, while the vibration energy of the oscillator v is equals to zero ground state is non-zero okay now this was in 2019 okay uh, the rotational energy of the rigid rotor j is equals to zero state can be zero pick the correct reason now this question i have just explained you i have just explained you the reason of it it has just asked in 2019 so you can see similar questions are asked in 2019 2020 so you can simply answer it in the comment sections below so that's a homework question you can just drop down in the comments okay try to answer in the comments all right i'll take the next one then the next question here says that the rotational constant for the diatomic molecule is 1.9225 centimeter inverse in general within the rigid rotor approximation at t is equals to 600 kelvin for rotational state with maximum population that is j max and the population of maximum intensity for the pure rotational absorption spectra which of the following holds true so what they are trying to ask is that you are given with the value of b that is in centimeter inverse that is 1.9225 centimeter inverse and uh, temperature is given to you that is 600 kelvin what they are asking key what is going to be the value of j max and i max all right so to solve this particular question you need to know the formula of j max okay so j max that means the level the rotational level from where maximum in uh, like uh, transition is going to happen that's what is j max and this is given by under root kt upon uh, 2hcb and minus half okay that's the formula to calculate it now here k is your boltzmann constant so you can write it down kbt h is your planck's constant c is the velocity of light in centimeter per second then only you can cancel out this b which is in given in centimeter inverse and t is the temperature so if you substitute all the values which are given to you because b is given to you temperature is given to you and you have to put your kb that is boltzmann constant as 1.38 into 10 to the power minus 23 and your planck's constant as 6.6 .6 into 10 to the power minus 34 so when you are going to calculate all these things by substituting it i'm not going to do it on the screen but uh, like you just have to put the values and solve it right uh, powers will be, uh, get easily cancelled out and then the thing which you are going to get will be roughly around like your j max will be roughly around 9.9 .9 something okay so basically you are going to get uh, after solving it will be 10.42 and minus 0 0.5 so when you are subtracting it you are going to get roughly the value will be around 10 so your j max will be 10 so you can simply cancel out option a and option c now talking about the position of maximum intensity that is your i max now j max can be calculated from the given values which are given to you so in order to calculate you need just b value and you need the t value in order to calculate your i max you need some more information so you need the energy value from where the transition is happening you need to know the energy differences between the two levels and uh, basically you need to know that from where like from which j the transition is arising basically the the initial j value and the final j value so all those things are not given to you so that's why i max uh, position cannot be determined from the information alone so you also need to find out that from which j level your transitions are like the intensity which you are getting is formed so that's why i max uh, position cannot be determined from the information alone and that's why option number d becomes the correct choice for this question so this calculative part which i'm not doing i'm not doing that because in the exam you are given with the calculator and you just have to use that so try to understand that how to use a calculator and for that you need to know how to use scientific calculator i have made a video dedicated for that so i'll make sure that you can watch it out i'll give you the link of that in the i button over here so you can watch that how to use 
gate calculator and the similar calculator you get in TIFR. So you will not face any problem over there as well. All right. So the next question here says that far infrared and microwave radiation is useful in studying the following process. Now, you know, microwave spectrum or microwave spectroscopy is also called as your rotational spectroscopy and far infrared also comes in the same range. Far infrared means the spectrum which goes out of the infrared range okay, and comes near to the microwave range. So, as you, the name suggests, it will be used to study the rotational spectrum. So, for what it is going to be studied? It is going to be studied uh, the changes in the my, uh, molecular rotational states only. So, option D will be correct. Let us say in the question it was asked about the infrared uh, radiation. So, infrared is used for vibrational states. And if it would not have given far infrared, instead of that just infrared and microwave trans radiation are useful. So, for that the answer would be ro vibrational rotational states of the molecule because for vibrational states you need, uh, you need, you just no, do not need far infrared but you also need the infrared range of vibrations, right? Or infrared range of radiations to study the vibrational changes in the molecule. So, that is why option number D is correct for this one. Alright, let us take the last question for this video. It says that a long column of water in any transparent bottle appears slightly blue. However, if we replace water with heavy water that is with D2O, it will look more transparent. This effect is due to. So, it is pretty simple. Let us say if I have a bottle that is full of water. Okay, so if I put water, we know that it pure water it looks slight slight blue and uh, the other one if i put the same bottle with let's say d2o okay with d2o then it it looks transparent that's what is given to you according to the question now why is it so okay it's because something appears of a particular color that's because of the absorption what it does okay which light it absorbs so rest of the light get reflected and that's why that particular thing looks of that particular color for example if this this patch is looking red in color that means whatever light is striking on it it's not going to be for the digital things it's not work it does not work but uh, uh, if you are looking upon anything nearby you and if it looks red in color that means that in that particular thing is absorbing all the other light and it's only emitting the red light so here it looks slight blue because it absorbs the other light and it emits the blue color light that's why water looks slight blue in color whereas d2 absorbs the light and it emits the light which is not in the visible range so that's why it looks transparent in color okay so that's how it looks like now it says that this effect is due to so this is because of difference in the absorption spectra of uh, H2 and D2O. Both of them will absorb different region of the spectral uh, spectrum series. Right, all right. So, that is how these question has to be done. There are quite a few questions which were logic based. Some of them were calculative, but uh, since you are given with calculator in the exam, so try to utilize that at its best and try to solve all the other previous years questions from molecular spectroscopy and if you have any doubt or if you have any question you can ask that down in the comment sections below uh, that's it from my side for this video thank you so much for watching and i will see you in the next one till then have a great day bye bye hey guys so i teach live on an academy plus platform here i teach for the csi ugc net category and you can follow me over here for regular classes you can access my free classes as well as my paid classes on this particular platform the classes which are free you can get that under the section of special classes whereas in order to access my paid classes paid live classes you have to take an academy plus subscription so do make sure that you take the an academy plus subscription to access all my paid classes which are quite organized the whole syllabus is being completed over there and the classes are quite regular over there so make sure that you take an academy plus subscription by using my referral code that is n underscore huda. That's it for this. Thank you so much.